I, I stopped wanting to do this podcast because I felt like I was just bitching and complaining the whole time. And I don't know why I was so afraid to bitch and complain. That's what I've been doing with my YouTube channel since the beginning. <laughs> I don't really want to get into it all, but let's just say um, I liked my intro. I liked the title of the podcast. And whatever it ends up becoming, fuck it. I just don't care anymore. And it feels so good to even talk right now. I, I legitimately went through so many different ideas of where I wanted to go with the podcast and this and that. And it just feels good right now to just say, fuck it. I know I want to talk. I know I want a, some sort of a, a solo, long form way of expressing myself and this is going to be that you know fuck it whatever happens happens if we start complaining and bitching then whatever and if we start just talking shit about politics then whatever i mean i i, I doubt that uh not much going on in politics anymore i mean i guess there is but not really um hello i'm busy i'm recording something What's up? Is it important? Not really, but I just heard him. Okay, well, you're not going to wear it now, are you? Okay. You can come wear my shirt later. Thank you. Love you. I love you. Love you so, yeah, whatever happens, happens. See? <laughs> um, I am now at a much better place than I was when I started the podcast. Um, wow. In so many different ways. Um, it was, uh, it's so wild. Like when I look back at the episodes, like even just the thumbnails and the topics of what I've talked about here, it's like so depressing and so saddening. And it's just like, wow. Um, I, but at the same time, I know I needed it in those moments and, Look like a crackhead right now. I got white shit on the side of my mouth. Oh my god. Um, I needed it back then because I truly was going through it. Like really, really, really was. And I guess I still have moments. Um, but damn, man, am I in a much better place? And am I happy? And do I have things, you know, sorted in a much better way than before? Um. I don't know. It's just, you know, things are going really good, really well, you know, for the family, for myself and for my mind, I guess, mostly, I would say, because it's just no longer like, I don't know, like, I, I feel like I, I it's shit can still be shaky in my head, but like I I'm used to it now. Now I have different uh, like tools I can use to get out of bullshit situations in my mind. And, you know, a lot of them I've talked about on here, you know? Um, but you know, it, it is a good thing, although I don't want to dwell on it. So thank you guys for sticking with me. I know I said I was going to change the podcast name and that was months ago, but you know what? Fuck it. That was yesterday and today's today, you know? Yeah. Roll the intro, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I miss that intro, baby? <laughs> Man, dude, been some wild episodes, though. There's been some, you know, some fun ones. The one I did with Monica was pretty fun. And I am going to start having guests on. So I want you guys to understand that and know, or at least know that the next episode, I will have somebody on and we'll just be talking, you know. Um, no big plans. Um, just going to go with it. You know, I, these are some fun ideas though. I did have, I had, you know, different ideas of what I wanted to do with the podcast. I wanted to do an audio only format. Um, I, st I thought about doing a trip stories podcast. I thought about doing, uh, audible, the audible 44 show with, and I still might end up doing this one day. Uh, but I just need more space, but I thought about doing an, uh, the audible 44 show, which I would have been like a, uh, like a variety show kind of, I, w I wanted to have like a green screen set up and kind of just have this like either like once or twice a month podcast or, or a show where I just did performed and did all the different things I know how to do. So like I, 
like I pictured it like a like a really like kind of cheesy looking but purposely variety show thing where I would like open up with like a, a a new song, like one of my new tracks or something like that. And then in the middle of it, I would do like some, I don't know, poetry and then or like some stand up comedy. And then I would do a trip st- or a vlog or I mean, a, a, like a, a, a blog or a video Vi- uh, talking video or some shit like that. So it was just like all the different things, like DJing for like 30 minutes during the show or something like that. Like just all the different things I know how to do and like doing them all live in a, some sort of like a live variety show kind of thing and have like sketches and comedy things and just do whatever the fuck I wanted. And and that that is exciting still, but like, I don't know. I'm not, it's just, it would require a lot of time and energy and um space even that's one thing i'm starting to understand here at this new place that we have that we have is that you know the space we we just don't got it we just don't got the space <laughs> we, I, it's funny my wife <laughs> me and monica got in this big ass thing last night because she's just so frustrated and annoyed that she is trying to go to bed early now because she goes to the gym at like 5 30 in the morning so she's been trying to go to bed by like 8 15 8 30 and even in the nights that I'm trying to go to bed with her or like I'm or like I'm chilling or I'm home with her or whatever, I'm over here on the computer and this is what she hears. Let's see if I don't mess anything up. And I'm like, oh, left, left. Two hits. One shot, one shot. Dead. <laughs> so <laughs> she's super annoyed by it all. And it all kind of blew up last night in a, in a, in a bit of a, you know, one of those marriage arguments. But uh it ended up, I don't know. I just like, it's, it's funny because I want to talk about shit with her, like in a healthy way. And the other day I told her that and, 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 and she, what did she say? And it's like, I want to be able to like, you know, obviously there's issues, you know, she's frustrated with me being on the fucking computer all night and she's just annoyed with the situation. We don't have much room or much space. Like we used to, you know, I used to have a garage. I'd be way over there. She'd be in the room way far away. She couldn't hear shit. So um <clears throat> it's different it's a you know we have to adapt to it um but i just wish like there was a way that we could like bring up things to each other that aren't in a way that like we are it blows up i just wish that that, that we both were better at being able to bring up things in a healthy way and it, we that's just not letting shit build up and blow up and and, and, and it, us either, either one of us exploding because we both have a tendency to do that but it was it was i'd laugh when i'm saying all this because it's just like i don't know it's normal marriage shit and it's you know it's normal human shit me and her have to share the same room yeah we're married and we've been sharing the same room for years now like seven years now but sometimes i get that shit gets fucking annoying and we're in a much smaller place than we were before. So it's just like, I get it. I get it. I, it was like, she was getting mad. And I was just like trying to explain to her, like, I get it. I get it. Trust me. Like, I'm in, I'm there with you, girl. You get on my goddamn nerves too. You think I, I, I like that I can't be like at 830 at night? I should be able to be like two hits, one hit, dead, <laughs> boxed. Okay, I should be able to do that, but <laughs> it is what it is. That's marriage, right? That's what it is, I guess. I mean, I would. That's what I'm assuming. <laughs> so it's been so far. It's been pretty good to me. <laughs> it's so weird because, like, I'm. At, I feel like I'm at a point now where, like, even when shit blows up, and like, even when I'm blowing up, it's like I still have this weird, like, awareness that it's immature unhealthy bullshit and it's like i still do it and it's like i see her do it and it's like it's just this weird i don't know like i said awareness or whatever that we're just like stupid little humans and like every time that i notice like that we're we're arguing or or just like interactions between us it's just like you know we we get along very well you know we we really do we don't you know day to day we're not really at each other's throats like we have been in the past you know we have a very playful relationship but you know there are times when i just see us like get the fuck away from me (laughs) 
it's just it's just funny. So, yeah, we're dealing with some space issues here, I guess you could say. And, uh, <laughs> you know, the girls have more space than us. They each have their own room. And it's like, what the fuck? A part of me is like, why does my daughters have their own room? And me and a grown woman have to share a room. It's kind of bullshit when you think about it. Like, it's not that's not fair. That's not right. They should be the ones sharing a room. How about. I get one of their rooms and Monica can have the other room and the girls can share the master bedroom. I like that. (laughs) That's how it should be. Have you heard about those uh, like divorced uh, couples who rather than I think there's a show about it. So rather than the kids going back and forth from house to house, the parents go back and forth from house to house. So the kids only live in one of the houses. And like for one week or whatever, the dad will live in the master bedroom. And then after that week, he'll he'll leave and then the mom will come move in for a week and, and live with the kids. But the kids have the same rooms, the same house, the same life, basically. And I heard about that. I was like, OK, I could see that working like that kind of makes sense. If, the, if that would have been me when I was younger, I'd have been like, good, good. Clean your fucking room, mom. <laughs> Make sure you. Bring all of this shit back, dad. I didn't buy you all this that you're packing in this bag for you to leave it at your other fucking house, okay? They don't pay for that shit here, there. They, they, so you need to leave it here. You know that new uh, Xbox that I just bought you, dad? You, nope, you're not taking it. It stays, it stays here. <laughs> oh, shit. Can you see the mirror? I don't know. For those who are uh, watching, <coughs> I'm going to set it up the podcast a certain way and I'm going to have a new angle, new, new situation going pretty soon. But um, I'm excited. I'm excited to be doing this. This is fun already. <laughs> I, what's so funny is like sometimes I get ideas like, oh, I should bring back the podcast. I, I literally haven't been thinking about this for that long. Like I've been thinking about what I want to do instead of the podcast for a long time. But like everything I started thinking about just kind of felt like, like quit. Like I've been trying my, like to, I've been trying to build shit without doing shit. So it's like, it's hard to build anything if you're not doing something. It's like, I'm creating all these different projects in my mind but I'm not doing anything. And it's like, I just, I'm at a point now where I'm like, fuck the bullshit. Fuck all these things that live up in here. Fuck demolish all that shit and do what literally just feels right in the moment. And that's where I'm at now. I know that this is going to feel right. Like I've been watching, uh, Chris D'Elia's podcast, the last few episodes he's done since he's come back. And it's like, it totally reminded me of how much he inspired me, how much his podcast totally does inspire me. Theo Vaughn's podcast, Bill Burr's podcast, how it's just like, they just basically rant and just talk about whatever comes up. And I'm like, I love that. I love the ability to do that. And I know I was doing the live streams on these podcasts, um, back in the day. And you know, that was, I think kind of just like, it was enjoyable, but I think that it might, you know, not, it's probably not going to be something I do anymore. Um, but who knows who the fuck knows? I don't know. And where did I go? Where did I, I, I lost my train of thought there. I, uh, I'm not going to live stream anymore. I like the long form podcast, Bill Burr. So yeah, either way, it's just like, when I listen to those podcasts, it, it, it's just like, I know I can do that. Like I've talked to the camera for so long. I feel 10 times more comfortable talking like this than I do to people. That's crazy. I've never even actually like realized how much more comfortable this is than real humans. And you know, like when people like stutter on camera, when they're first trying to make a blog, they're like, um, hello, uh, I, um, you know, that's how I am in real life. If you meet me, Chances are you're going to be like, that dude was either super weird or he just did not like me or he was fucked up. Chances are I was a little fucked up, but chances are that I was not being mean to you. You know, I'm just very, I have been awkward in the past. I'm working on it. I'm doing a lot more uh, work on it and I'm, I think I'm doing better. 
uh, with like social anxiety and things like that. Uh, but it takes practice. Like I said, you can't build shit if you don't do shit. So that's one thing I'm realizing too, is like, I can't get out of this social anxiety bullshit, this lonely depression bullshit if I don't do anything. And it's, um, it's definitely been an eventful few months since I ended the podcast because I feel like I ended the podcast in a, in kind of in like a very limbo place. And I legitimately like in a limbo place. Is that a good word? In a very, um, confused place and I didn't really care or know what was happening um, with the podcast. I mean, I cared, but I don't know why I said I didn't care. Maybe I didn't care. I just didn't know what it was. I knew that I just, it was like when I broke up with this, I I wouldn't say I broke up with her, but I was talking to this girl uh, for a long time and we'd hung hang out and you know, all the time or whatever. And, but I, I started to realize that like I wasn't going anywhere being with her you know what i'm saying like so i had i broke up with her and stopped being or talking to her um i was a really shitty guy about it too but i did i couldn't be with her anymore because i realized it was like holding me back you know she was driving me everywhere basically letting me use her car giving me money sometimes and it was just like i was such a scrub living at my dad's house getting taken care of by this female and it was just like damn i need to get out of this relationship and I think that's kind of the same situation. And I bring that up because I felt the same way about the podcast. Like I realized I was just using the podcast as a way for me to like self hate in a way. And there was a very, a lot of therapeutic uh, things to it and there still will be. Um, but like, yeah, I don't know. It just is what it is. You know, sometimes you got to take a break. I know it was a break I needed, but what the fuck ever? Well, well where was I? Where the fuck was I? Uh, break from the podcast. Um, shit. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Cheers. It's dizzy, baby. Spot to be. Um. So yeah, man. I I don't know. I guess I I could say that life's been good. I've got I've um obviously, you know, I don't know if I spoke how much I spoke about it on the, on the, in the previous podcast, but we moved from our old house to this new place and life did a, a complete 180. And it got a lot smoother financially and um it's wild that, you know, that people act as if money doesn't buy happiness. You know, it's wild that people say that because it, it, Kind of does, <laughs> kind of does. You know, they say I think up into that once you hit like a hundred thousand dollars a year, or so, that that anything after that doesn't really add to your happiness. And I guess that would make sense. But holy shit, like does going from wondering how you're gonna pay bills and like legitimately living paycheck to paycheck, you know having consistent overdraft charges in your bank account, going from that to, you know, having a savings account to buy a home eventually is insane to me. The it's, it's fucking crazy that I took this long to, for it to like make sense in my head. And it's, it wasn't easy though. Like it was not, it was never easy for both of us to work. You know what I'm saying? Just because we never had like help with our kids. So it wasn't like there were times when I had to work and she had to stay home. Um, because that was all, because if not, the kids would be home alone, you know, in a diaper trying to feed themselves, make their own bottles and shit. I don't know if they can do that. Um, (laughs) but yeah, so we couldn't we couldn't do we couldn't both work. And then when it got, we got to a place where we could both work, there was always something that seemed to come up in my mind why it would not work. And it would be like, you know, the kids aren't going to uh, you know be raised by me. We're going to need babysitters and this and that. And then I kind of made it up in my mind that I was going to work, but you know, I'll work graveyard shift. And that's when I got the job at the gas station, which I talked a lot about where a lot of the fucking yesterday podcast evolved from. I legitimately got the idea for the podcast while watching the yesterday movie in that gas station. 
Anyways, um, so basically without going too deep into it, man, it's just like making that change from barely getting by to savings account shit was really hard and I did it kicking and screaming, but holy fuck, man, is it better? (laughs) Is it much better to not have to live paycheck to paycheck? And is it much better to not, you know, be constantly worried and depressed and trying to sell shit on offer up? Like, I mean, nothing wrong. We still try to sell shit on, shit on offer up. But I mean, when you're doing it to try to fucking pay a gas bill or some shit, that shit is not fun. When you're literally making 30 bootleg DVDs in a day for 50 bucks, which is a good day for you, that shit is not fun. But you know what it is? It's like you get used to it. And it's like you you don't really realize or even it doesn't really even come into your mind that it can be better because you're just used to it. And it's not even necessarily a bad thing. You know, it's not, I'm not trying to place judgment on my past self or whatever the fuck, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, I, I, it's hard, man. Life is fucking hard and it's a struggle to try to be okay financially, man, especially in California. Uh, it, it's, it's fucking hard. Bottom line, it's just fucking hard. And on top of that, it's mentally hard. And on top of the, on top of it being so like mentally and physically hard, it's, it's harder to not be okay just chilling and living paycheck to paycheck. Because even when you are doing that, you can still get, you know, a a 12 pack every Friday. You can still smoke a little weed here and there. You know what I mean? You can still have what I would, I was considering a good life. And I still, you know, have drinks every once in a while and smoke weed a lot, but it's like, It's like life is still good even when you're barely living paycheck to paycheck because that's still pretty good. Like you're eating food. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm talking shit. Maybe I'm I'm an idiot right now. But I'm just like, it's like I think of, of things like situations like that about about humans in a way like in like a historical standpoint. Like as if I was an alien looking at the entire history of humanity and just judging, you know, based with, with that perspective rather than this. 30 year old into 2021 talking to a camera perspective. I feel like when you have that out, outside perspective, putting history into account, the numbers of human beings that there is into account, you know, technology and all these other things into account. I think that that's the most proper way to look at most situations, right? Okay. So get to get, to get back to talking about why, living paycheck to paycheck kind of isn't that bad and why I've even said in previous podcasts or previous live streams that I just feel like my life is too good right now is because historically we are, if you, if you put into okay perspective, how dirt fucking poor, the human race has been since the beginning of time. We, even the ones who live paycheck to paycheck are some of the richest humans who have ever lived. Now, that's not to say there's not absolute suffering. That's not to say that there's not absolute, you know, fucking people starving to death. You know, that isn't, you know, still happening. But I'm saying that, When you're in America and you're living paycheck to paycheck, there's like shit you can do to elevate your mind and and, and, and escape. And you can still kind of feed your family for the most part. I mean, kind of barely. So it's like it's like it's it can be comfortable, I should say. And, you know, I think I'm trying to like. uh, Backtrack here because. (laughs) I don't want to, you know, this is not the point I'm trying to make, really. You know, the point I'm trying to make is that it's like you can get complacent, bro. That's all. You can get complacent. You can get comfortable. And it's hard to snap out of it. 
and it takes a long time, but it's fucking worth it, man. And I could say that here and now because I work 40 hours minimum a week. I walk about seven miles a, a day minimum every day I work. Um, I've lost legitimately about 20 to 25 pounds since I started the podcast most in because of work. Um, and because I've been working my ass off legitimately, like physically, like literally working my ass off, like my butt has gone down in size. Sorry, ladies. <laughs> Sorry, ladies. So stupid. <laughs> um, but seriously, man, I've lost a lot of weight. I fucking been working my ass off and I have realized that that feeling I had to get back to that, that, I, uh, that, that feeling I had that my life was too good, even though I was suffering and going through some bullshit was what I was trying to express is that I'm too comfortable and I don't know how to break out of that comfort loop. And it's been hard, man. Uh, but what I've learned is that I think that what held me back from being free from real freedom, what held me back from true freedom was a lack of discipline because I'm starting to understand that legitimately prioritizing your priorities in your mind Having the discipline to say no to something and the discipline to say yes to something else is the true freedom from yourself because you basically, you beat yourself. You rewire your brain to learn to habitually enjoy the things that are good for you and to properly mm, and how to properly, uh, I guess, dispense things that aren't good for you in a healthy way amongst your life. I know that's a way to just, yeah, I hope that made sense. I need to stop smoking so much weed when I talk on these podcasts. But yeah, man, it's like, it's just like, it's, it's that discipline to just, to, 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 to just rewire your brain, to enjoy certain things and, 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 you know, prioritize certain things is legitimately a magic trick. And if you could learn to control your mind or you, you can never learn to control your mind, in my opinion, that motherfucker does its own shit. And all you can really do is work around it, work with it, and try to guide it the best way possible. But your mind is its own thing. So yeah, I don't know. Whatever. I don't know what I'm even going, where I'm at now. But if you can learn to, to work with your mind and just learn it and figure it out and how it works and what's, you know, what your, you know, your, corks are and your like your weaknesses are and your strengths are and how to play to them at the right times in the right moments and how to legitimately have these negative thoughts into your mind and then just let them go just as easily as they entered it is a fucking magic trick i'll, I'll end this topic like this the mind as david goggins says uh check out his book can't hurt me it's fucking great the mind will always have the tac tactical advantage over you. It knows your weaknesses. It knows your insecurities. It knows all that bullshit that nobody else knows that maybe you don't even really know. And because of that, it is the worst enemy you can possibly have, and it will probably win most of the time. But you will have a constant dancing partner in the struggle of life. And this is kind of going on a tangent now. I don't even know what this really means, but like, I'll say this and this is going to maybe in, without even going into it, but I truly feel like that voice inside your head 
that you're constantly fighting with is in some shape or form God and the divine and the universe and or. And I think that by working with your mind and by understanding your spirit and your soul and just the ways you react to the outside world, I believe that is the closest way to actually getting to God, not to becoming God, but having a a legitimate spiritual substantial relationship with God. And this is not in a religious sense, or maybe it is, I don't know, but that's kind of how I feel about the relationship with your mind and how important it is and how, how special it is even and how uh, it, it, like it's almost like you have, it's like the, the way I see it is like, like you can have your own best friend in your mind in a way they can be an asshole sometimes, but if you like learn to work with this, it, like, it's like a person in your mind that like, I don't know. It's like that friend you have that constantly want to, wants to challenge you to be better. But sometimes you just push them away because it's like you don't want to hear that shit or, you know, or whatever the fuck, you know, like you just. It's it's like it's 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 is Jiminy. No, I, I don't want to make a reference. I don't really fully understand. But like it's just it's it can be. Like a coach, I guess. Like, I don't fucking know. Whatever. I'm going off too much. It, I think I lost it at the end there. But, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I'm having fun. I'm having fun in my head. I'm having fun in my mind. I'm having fun reading hella books. Dude, I've read so many fucking books um, the past year or so. More books than I read in my... I've read more books in the last six months than I've read in my entire life. By a lot. And... Um, it's been great, dude. I read, what have I been reading? I read that, uh, this, the book later by Stephen King. It just came out. It's like, um, it's like a horror movie, a horror, a horror book. That one was really cool. That one was real spooky. I never really read a book like that. Like with a story that was uh, interesting. Like, I mean, I, I guess I have, but like not in a while. I don't, I haven't read any like fiction at all. Really? I think in these new books I've read, have I? No, I don't think so. It's all been nonfiction for the most part. I mean, memoirs and misinformation was kind of a fiction book. I mean, it is a fiction book, kind of. But yeah, anyways, it's a great book. Um, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. Amazing. Fucking amazing. 12 Rules for Life. Uh, Jordan Peterson. Amazing. The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Manson. Amazing. We actually just did a podcast on the Mind Control podcast, which has its own YouTube channel now. Um, we just did a podcast on that book, Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. And I think it was our best podcast yet. I do. <laughs> but it, it it's becoming natural for me and Corey to talk now. Like it's it's not awkward. We just go back and forth. We like listen. It's like it's, it's getting better slowly but surely. And it's, it's really nice. It's becoming a lot more natural and shit. So that's beautiful, man. I love I love doing that podcast with them. It keeps me on my toes, too, like with mo- movies and and music like. There's a lot of shit on there I, I wouldn't have normally have, have watched or checked out if not for the podcast. So it's like, it's good. And it's funny because him and I have always been recommending movies and books and fucking songs and shit back and forth. All We've been doing that for years, way before this podcast. We used to literally hang out. We like if a new Eminem album or Kid Cudi album came out, we would like go to each other's house and like listen to the whole thing from beginning to end, like over and over, like just like drinking and hanging out. So it's like, we've been doing this. It's just, it's been a little bit of a transition to, to learn how to podcast, uh, doing it, but it's been good. It's been good. So check that out. Mind control podcast. You can check that out anywhere. You get your podcasts. Ah. Oh man. I got this thing. Whoop. It's a whoop strap. So it like measures your heart rate and your heart rate variability and your sleep. And it kind of like coaches you on how much strain you're putting on yourself and when you should rest and when you should work out and how much sleep you should get. It's actually really fucking cool. Um, it's making me realize how 
little I've, I do every day. It makes me feel like a bitch. <laughs> like there's days I'm like, fuck, I feel tired. And it tells me, nope, you better keep going, bitch. I like it though. I like it a lot. It kind of like keeps me. It, it's like that. It's like you're, you, honey, you know that addiction you have to social media where you're constantly checking it. Now I have that same addiction to this app, but it's all about my heart rate and how much, you know, I'm working out and stuff like that. So I noticed myself doing pushups here and there just to kind of get my numbers up. So it's like, it's turned that addiction to social media into like something that's actually good for me, which is weird, <laughs> but it's tight. It's good. It's cool. I love it. I love it. I can't wait to really get some more information on it and like start. I think tonight I'll probably have my first like hard workout. Um, hopefully tonight, if not tomorrow morning. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping that I have my first hard workout and see how it affects it. So I don't know if I want to work out at night anymore though. I don't like, it's like, I, I like running when I smoke. I like, I like jogging when I smoke like a light jog <laughs> that's it or work or like some light lifting weights, but I don't like getting, I don't like smoking and then going to the gym. Like that shit is just like, I'm in there and I'm just like, I don't know. It can be okay. But like the last few times I have, I've just been like my give up meter is just slightly lower and I fucking hate it. Uh, but maybe it's a good, good test on your mind. I heard somebody say that about fasting and smoking weed. That like they would fast and smoke weed so that that way they would actually have, it would be harder to fast because they'd get hungry. And then I, I was like, I, I fast and smoke weed because smoking weed eliminates my hunger. I, I don't really get hungry until I start like coming down from weed. I would say, I hate to say coming down from weed, but yeah. Never been the type, never been the type to want to fucking eat food when I'm high. It just feels like a waste. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've fucking enjoyed some shit while I've been high, but I know people who would literally smoke a bowl just to go eat or like, like right before they're, they're about to eat, like just some casual food at home. They're like, oh, let me take a hit. It's going to make it better. And it's, like, it's like it does. It's fine. It is what it is. But for me. It just feels like a waste of the weed because right when I eat, I'm just back to normal. I'm back to, you know, sober. Maybe I smoke too much weed. Maybe that's what it is. Let me put this thing down. <laughs> I have been noticing I've been smoking a little too much weed, guys. I've been getting into edibles. And I legitimately have been hitting dabs. I, I feel like I feel like I just like I don't know. Like I just told a, a really dark, deep, dark secret to you guys. I feel like I let you down. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. So I've been doing dabs. Okay. I feel like a crackhead and I guess technically I am a crackhead now because I've been doing dabs out of a rig. Okay. And the, the, whatever fucking concentrate it is, it looks like some fucking DMT. It legitimately looks like DMT. Like it's like crystals and shit. I never seen it. I was like, I was, I mean, I always knew wax, like your concentrates came in different like textures, but I never really fucked with them like ever. You know what I'm saying? The only wax I ever concentrates I ever used were in the stizzies or the, in the pens in depends. No, the pens. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting learning how to dab. I literally had to watch a YouTube video. Only time I've ever actually, I've never actually lit and did like a dab myself. I've always just been like the homies been like, oh, I'm a dab you out on me. Come through, dog. Come to my car after work, dog. I'm going to fucking dab you out, dog. <laughs> it's funny because like, I swear, anytime anybody's ever wanted to like dab me out, they wanted to fucking dab me out hard. Like they wanted to dab me hard. It's like, they just get, they're just like evil, like fucking Joker looking mischievous motherfuckers. Just looking out the corner of your, of, of their eye while you're like coughing up a fucking lung. And you know, half of your lung is popping out of your throat and you can't breathe. And you're, they're just like, <laughs> I told you, I'm going to dab you out. <laughs> <I'm gonna breathe. laughs> 
You know, that's, <laughs> that's how it feels to me. Every time they just get this weird, like almost like sexual deviant enjoyment out of seeing me just fucking hacking, trying my hardest to desperately get a fucking breath of air. You ever get so fucking like you can't breathe so much that you have to like in your mind, you're like, no, it's okay. It, you're not gonna die. Like you, <laughs> like you're in a auto in a fucking a, a fucking shroom trip, and you have to like talk to yourself before you fucking jump off a bridge. I was, I went left field. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, <laughs> never happened to me. For the record, I don't know why I said that, um, but. Yeah, man, they get some fucking weird shit, some sexual shit. They get a fucking heart on. Just seeing you fucking dying. Fucking crackheads. Anyways, you guys should come over and do a dab with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a beautiful day. What a beautiful day it's been, ladies and gentlemen. I, um, man, dudes, I, 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 I'm so happy. I don't know how often I'm going to be doing these or when I'm going to be doing these or if there's going to be a schedule to these or what the fuck. But I'm telling you right now, it is Thursday at 2.30 in the afternoon. And right when this is done, I'm going to upload it straight away. Um, so, yeah, man, this is exciting. I even have like new skills as far as like editing the audio and all that shit. So it's like maybe not new skills, but like I learned something about the audio to make it sound better. And it's just. Yeah, man, I think it's a good time to bring it back. And um, we'll see who we have on the next episode. Um, I'm interested to learn and start talking to more people, dude. Like, I'm not even, like, nervous about it anymore like I have been in the past. Like, I remember talking about having a podcast where I just, like, dude, the Audible 404 podcast where I just had people come on. And I remember thinking how nerve-wracking it would have been. But now it doesn't sound nerve-wracking at all. It sounds interesting and fun. So I don't know. I'm not ending right now or am I ending right now? Um, I'm going to end right now. F it. It's been 45 minutes. I think that's good. Oh, let's go for another 15 minutes. What else can we talk about? Fuck it. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, I'm DJing again. You guys remember DJ Shaman? I think I'm bringing that name back. Maybe. I like the the logo for DJ Shaman. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it. Maybe I can bring up a picture right here for the people who are actually um, watching the podcast. But uh, I legitimately bought a new uh, updated version of my DJ mixer, which is a Tractor Control S2. I had the MK1. I upgraded to the MK3. So this is the uh, Shaman logo right here, guys. DJ Shaman. S-H-A-W-M-I-N. That was my name when I DJed. And I just love this logo so much. It's basically like two eyes on top and then kind of like a, a like a a ha, like a happy face and then a, a sad face underneath it. But like, I like it because it's very, very trippy, but also it kind of looks like, like a face kind of, but also it looks like in a way like the two eyeballs could be heads and that the two things that are protruding on each side could be arms and legs and it could be somebody dancing. So that's kind of what I've always thought about as far as shaman. I love that logo either way, but, um, what was I? Going? Oh yeah. I'm D I'm DJing. Got, got a new mixer and I got a new laptop. I got a new laptop and I bought a new fucking SSD to go, or I got a new hard drive to go with it. And I got a new, some more Ram to go with it. Um, yeah. So I'm going to be DJing again. It's kind of like, so why am I DJing again? Or why did I stop DJing? Um, I always loved it, man. It was always fun. I, I remember back in the day, I downloaded a virtual DJ on my computer and I would just like mess around with that and go back and forth. And I just loved the idea of mixing two songs together to then they like, work together and then it sounds good. And I just love that. <clears throat> um, Either way, over the years, I think around like 2009 or so, I started DJing legit or 10, maybe, maybe even, I don't know, around there. And uh, I always enjoyed it and it was just fun to do at home. And then eventually I started like recording mixes and shit like that. And um, that's when like kind of things changed a little bit when that's kind of around the time when 
I started thinking like, oh, maybe I can actually do this. So I remember I got a mixer. It was called a Hercules DJ mixer. And I forgot how, what I hooked it up to. I might've used it with a virtual DJ, honestly. And I made the, this one mix and I, I spent like a fucking dude. I, I had to have done that mix like a hundred times to try to practice doing it. Um, but it came out really good. I wish I still had it. Um, anyways, I fucking leg- just started to enjoy it. And then I started to realize how much more I enjoyed it. Not necessarily just the aspect of mixing two songs together, but like I enjoyed the aspect of playing music for a crowd. It became this weird shamanistic kind of thing that I grew into of controlling the energy and the vibe of a crowd. It, it, there's some something so spiritual and like uplifting about that when you can really, you're, it's not your music you're playing, you know, I mean, it could be, but, and I'm sure it's a whole different thing when it is, but when you're the DJ playing the music and controlling the environment and helping the environment become something enjoyable for people who are there, hopefully there's something absolutely spiritual to that. And I saw that early in, especially going to raves how much the raves and festivals were like when I went to church and was in those like altar calls and how similar the effects were. And then to be the person who basically had, I don't want to say controlled it, but helped um, manifest that, I guess was, and was, and is amazing. And I really, really just had so much fun with it going to raves, you know, DJing at raves. I got flown to fucking Indianapolis one time to DJ at a concert or like a little club. Um, I did a lot of things when we DJed, you know, it got so much, it got so big. We got so legit that we actually DJed at a club named Alessandro's. I think it was in downtown LA. And we had an amazing set. We legitimately cleared out the main stage and had everybody in the entire club at our little side stage, and we tore it up. We killed in a great way. Um, but I think when I analyze it, I, and, and that was the last thing I did DJing. And, and I got away from it after that. I got my laptop stolen. So that was a big reason as to why as well. We had all my music on it. It had so much shit on it. That's a whole other story, but... I'm not going to say it was just because of this one reason, but it was also because I had my laptop stolen. Um, But I kind of slowly got away from it being like a passion of mine because I just had to focus on other things. And I realized that if I continued to DJ, I was going to not be able to work on other things as much as I should. And uh, on top of that, the experience DJing at that club felt slimy to me. Like it felt like the guys who we were working with, just wanted to use us because we were good at DJing, which makes fucking sense. Like it was like, I just had this weird anxiety fear of failure about it because it was becoming good. It's like, it wasn't even a fear of failure. It was a fear of success. This is a huge fucking ongoing thing that I deal with in many different situations where I have this huge fear of not only failure, but a fear of success. I've seen that I have been so afraid of either failure or success because I'm comfortable being the struggling artist. I'm comfortable with that. And I fear being the artist that nobody gives a fuck about. So if I can consistently just be the struggling artist then I never have to be the failure or the success in my mind. Does that make sense? And as I've started to notice this, I've started to understand that, Hey, I actually really enjoy DJing. And the only reason I stopped was because I had a huge failure, fear of failure and success. So fuck that bullshit. I'm upgrading everything I have. I know that in 2021, when the festivals start opening up and the clubs start opening up, it's going to be an entirely new scene. It's all going to be revamped. It's going to be the roaring 20s again after the Spanish flu. That's legitimately how I feel. So I was like, fuck it. I need to be ready. I want to be ready. It's going to be fun. I can't wait. And I'm getting all new shit. 
So I've been re-downloading a lot of music. I've been, you know, practicing here and there, I guess. Tomorrow morning is really when I'm going to practice, and I'm probably going to go live on Twitch as well if you guys want to check that out. Uh, Maybe on here, but probably Twitch just because of copyright shit. But um, Audible 484 on Twitch if you guys want to follow and stuff like that. But um, yeah, man. So I'm just like, you know, in such a good place that I'm just like, fuck it. I want to do the stuff that I enjoy because I have the time. I have the energy to now because because I have the freedom to now because of the discipline I have and the things that actually matter. It's so fucking great. (laughs) It's legitimately like. I want to scream it from the fucking rooftops, kind of. But at the same time, I know I shouldn't. (laughs) I know the best thing for me to do is to just be better for myself in order to be better for others. Like the the second you start seeing, you know, changes within yourself, you start thinking that, oh, you know, everything and you know, the secrets and you want to help everybody. The only thing that's admirable about that, admirable about that is wanting to help everybody. But when you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, and you don't have two legs to stand on or a legs to stand on. I don't know the fucking, I'm really bad with those type of references. Um, you can just come off like an asshole or you can come off like a douchebag, you know, the same way your friend goes off to Bible camp and comes back trying to make you read the Bible. And you're like, dude, get the fuck away from me. The same thing can happen with yourself. And I've realized that. So, the best thing for me to do is not scream it from the rooftops, but hey, if you work really hard, you can actually beat your mind every once in a while. And over time, life gets easier. And you don't want to cry all the time. And you can like enjoy happy moments with your family and like not want to cry out of happiness. And you can at work and not want to kill yourself it's great but don't tell anyone (laughs) 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 oh baby jesus christ hold on i gotta text monica back i think it's been too long i think it's been too long uh what are you doing recording a podcast lol you question mark I pranked all my friends today. It was great. Because <laughs> it was April Fool's Day today. So I, I text um, Danny Boy. Actually, somebody who I'm actually thinking about having on the first episode as a guest. Um, I text him and I said, hey, did you see that uh, Hard Summer Music Festival is requiring vaccines to enter? <laughs> he was like, wait, what? And then... Uh, I, I told him I'll just, you know, April Fool's or whatever. But then I told him, hey, go in the group chat because we have a group chat with all our friends. And I said, go in the group chat and say that and I'll agree with you and we'll see who we can fool. <laughs> we ended up fooling everyone for at least a little while. Uh, at one point, I, uh, I everybody was like, man, that's crazy. I had a feeling this is going to happen and blah, blah, blah. And then at one point, what did I, I said, uh, I said, yeah, I heard that. There, it's, I, I put dot, dot, dot. It says here that they're going to be that they're going to have social uh 3 foot social distancing rules and social distancing smelling dogs <laughs> and a couple it was like i think a couple of people thought i was joking or but a couple of people like i think took it seriously i don't i don't know for sure exactly but either way i did get them with the uh, vaccine part of it all but yeah <laughs> it was a great April Fool's Day today, I guess I could say. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm out of here now. I um, have so much to talk about, but I'm just going to leave it at that for now, man. I'm going to try to keep these to about an hour, maybe even 45 minutes, just so it's not, you know, too long. And I don't feel like I'm, you know, pushing it. Um, but hey, man, sometimes they'll be fun. Sometimes they'll be sad. Sometimes I'll have friends. Sometimes we'll be, you know, bullshitting sometimes we'll be on zoom some talking about life i don't fucking know so maybe one day i'll come on here and have paul mccartney on the yesterday with audible before before podcast how's that i don't know sometimes i say things and it's like what what does that mean what do you even mean by that like why did i say that anyways i love you guys <laughs> be happy man be yourself work hard 
do something. You can't build something if you ain't doing something. You know what I'm saying? So get out there, try something new. Um, get your body to a point where it's breathing heavy every once in a while. Drink some water. I don't know. Suck some dick if you're into that. You know, whatever. Whatever you're into, man. Do it. Be happy. Be yourself. You know? I love you guys so much, man. So, so much. We're back. (laughs) See you guys next time, man. Peace.